I'll just wait for it to. Usually, there's a recorded message that says this is now recording, but because it says recording in the top right, I'm assuming that we're starting. So I'm going to share some slides and feel free to jump in at any point with any questions um, or if there's anything you want to contribute. At the end, we're going to have a time for Q&A so we can go, because it's quite a small group, we can even go a bit deeper into your own personal messaging or if you've got any questions or if you want to give us some examples as well of what you're saying and maybe we can work together to look at how we could, yeah, perhaps make that more effective. So starting with the slides, I'm going to share my screen. Cool. And so in this session, we're going to talk about how to master your content messaging to gain and retain loyal customers for your food enterprise. So I'm just going to start with thinking around coronavirus and how it's been a bit of a silver lining for sustainable, for the alternative food system in that lots of well, we've seen lots of our hubs have pretty immense growth through this time. So it's really exciting times. My partner, who's um, a mushroom grower, he's seen his business grow about five times the size since coronavirus started, but he's also found that recently, and much like a lot of hubs, that, yeah, sales are starting to stay at a, at a similar pace and maybe for some starting to decline. So in response to this, um, this presentation is really around how to how to really tweak your messaging to encourage perhaps your new customers, that's so customers that you might not have been talking to before, to stay with your food enterprise. And also just really going to the core of marketing messaging to look at how you talk to your customers and how you might be able to do that better. Um, so just to start, I'm going to introduce the kind of approach that I take to marketing, and that is human-centered marketing. And it's really putting your customers and, you know, the human who is your customer at the center of what you do with your marketing. And this has been proven to, particularly now, be one of the most effective ways to approach marketing, um, just because people have, yeah, I, I think people are really now looking for authentic, marketing that feels more human as opposed to what might have been kind of slow like marketing that's full of slogans or feeling like you're being sold to or very yeah so it's so it's, it's, it's a different approach but it's effective and one of the yeah one of one of the most effective things that you can do with what with your marketing and how you speak to your customers is really focus on how you can help your customers to belong. And by belong, I mean, feel part of a community, feel part of a clan. It means how you can help your customers feel like they belong to the alternative food movement. So it's anything that you can do to help your customers feel perhaps like they're part of something bigger. And this is something that charities do really well. Because essentially when a charity is marketing, what all they're really offering their customers is the, is the sense that they're doing something good, but also the feeling that they're part of something bigger and they're contributing to positive change. So for a charity to be able to do that with effectively no physical tangible return to their customers or to their supporters, it shows that this is a really effective approach, particularly if in our area, which is alternative food systems, we're blessed with this really yeah, with, with having this social cause at the heart of what we do. So it's really good to, yeah, this is a really good thing to talk about and to focus on to help your customers be part of something bigger. And this image here is something you might have heard about before. It's um, the hierarchy of needs by Meisner. And it shows that love and belonging is one of the core human motivators right after safety needs. So it's a really important thing for humans to feel like they belong, particularly when we see, you know, our current society and particularly following, you know, coming out of social, social isolation where people have been separated. It's funny that with social isolation, people have felt separated, but there's lots of research and surveys being done now that show that people feel more part of a community than they have ever done. And perhaps this is because people feel like they're part of something bigger in 
responding to coronavirus. But either way, belonging is a really core cool human driver. So it's a really good idea to utilize this in, in your marketing. So this kind of brings the question of belong to what? What do you want your customers to belong to? And it's really important to, if you haven't done this already, and it's also really good at different times to just stop, check, and have do this exercise as a business and really understand yourself, really understand your business. And I'm sure you do, you're in it every day. Um, but it's sometimes good to just pause and think of it from a customer perspective, for example. And when you're thinking about your marketing message, if you want it to resonate with your customers, it also has to be really authentic to you and your business. So I really urge to take some time to get really clear on your core motivating principles, either if you're doing this on your own, you as an individual and why you're doing what you're doing, or if you're a business, actually have a, a time out as a team and really work out what are your core motivating principles for doing what you're doing. So here I, I've created a core values exercise, which I'll be sharing on our Facebook group. And this people that aren't on the group already, and we have a, a Facebook group for the marketing hub, and this will be on there. So it's actually a handout that you could work through in your own time. So the core values exercise is essentially where you think of three values that you believe encapsulate your 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 principles as a business so it's again it's thinking about what you care about and what you stand for and trying to distill that into three words or values that you feel describe who you are and what you're about um so this exercise gives a long list of different words that you can use you can of course use any of your own it just it's like a helps to kind of start with some something and then yeah think you could think of as many words as you want and try and distill just three and it's a yeah it's a really useful process to go through so i'll be sharing that at the end of this class and last time when i i actually did this exercise in one of our previous webinars and it was really nice because we went around the group and just kind of you know going with what our heart first thought what would be the first three values that we could describe our business with and I wonder actually I'm going to stop sharing for a second and I wasn't going to do this but I think it might be because we're such a small group it might be quite a nice thing for us to do now so does, I'm going to stop sharing and then we're back to our, does anyone first of all is anyone here I think that that was in that session I'm not sure if that is but any, does anyone feel brave enough to contribute off the top of the head, three words that could describe your enterprise. Okay, so I'm gonna start with ours. I'm gonna share screen again. Sorry. So we've been doing this as the Open Food Network as a team. It's been a bit of a work in progress, but here's where we are so far. And we've chosen these three words of enabling, collaborative, and transformative. And when you have your three values, it's useful to, this isn't a slogan by the way, because we're all more than a slogan, but it's a way to just have each of these words and then describe what they mean to you and your team. So once you've got your three words, if you've had lots of different words, then you can group them into different set into different groups that are along a similar way of thinking, and then perhaps make a sentence to describe each from the other words. So for example, with enabling, we've described this as helping to remove barriers and blocks. And collaborative, we actually had some other words that were similar to collaborative, like teamwork and networks and community. So we've used these words in a sentence to describe what collaborative means to us. So we've got promoting connectivity, co-creation and community networks. And again, all of this is a working process for us because we're going through this same process, but it's really nice to be able to share it here. And transformative, and that's supporting the journey from idea to reality. And we believe in systemic change. So here's kind of where we are with this. And it's it's really helpful, particularly if it's if, if you're it's helpful 
even if you're just one person, but if you're a team, it's really, it's a really good exercise to do to help get all of your team members involved in creating this. And then also behind each of the, to get behind each of these values. And it means that if your team, if you're sharing the responsibility of talking on social media, for example, it means you've always got these core values to refer back to, to help you work out how you're going to speak. And for example, what tone you're going to speak in and how, how you're going to communicate with your, with your customers. Excuse me, I'm losing my voice a little bit today. So if I, if I lose it completely, then I'll just <laughs> whisper or type. Um, and so the core of this is to really take a time out and get really clear on what you believe in as a business. Once you're really clear on this, it will help your customers to become, to, to be able to understand what you're about as well. It's, it's an exercise that once you've done it, naturally the way that you write to customers and the way you communicate be it through email or through your social media posts will, will naturally be communicating these values and if you know what you believe in and it aligns with what your customers believe in then there's this resonance between you which helps your customers to feel part of what you're doing and to feel like they belong to you essentially your your clan or your community so to think about what you believe in you want to get really clear on your core message and also think about how it comes across. So take some time to define your core message as a business. So this, once you've defined your core values, then you can create a mission statement for your enterprise. And so this is a core message which can incorporate all three and this core message can help guide everything you do with your marketing. And like I said, if this is something in that you could do as a, as a core exercise from this, all of your marketing, marketing activities will become more clear as they align back to this core message that you want to express. And once you have your core message, then what you want to say will naturally follow from that. And to go back to this idea of helping your customers to feel like they belong to a community or they belong or feel like they are part of your part of something and you have yeah and to help your customers feel like you have aligned values it's helpful to talk about what issues you identify with so you can again you can do this yourself or you can do this with your team but really decide what issues you care about and what you might want to identify your business with this is helpful because this will help your customers who care about the same things that you do feel like you feel more trust in your business. It will, and, and trust naturally generates more customer loyalty. It's a sense of feeling like you're in it together. And particularly when things feel so chaotic on the macrocosm, feeling, yeah, you want more and more people want to feel a values alignment with the brands that they work with. And this is this is really effective marketing. Because, and it's not just marketing, it's also, again, it's 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 more than that. It's it's kind of really treating your customers like human beings and allowing your business to connect with them in that same way. Because behind every business are the humans that create the business. And it's just taking away this idea of selling to your customers being this one transactional thing and it being more again this kind of creating community with your customers which is a it's really effect, it's really effective marketing there are lots and lots of studies that show that when customers feel part of a community they spend a lot more with that business or they're more likely to stay with that business and if you think about the marketplace at the moment, particularly around food and the way that a lot of, there are a lot of mainstream brands and supermarkets that you know, are very shouty in the marketplace that you know, can distract people with the shiny, shiny of you know, lots of variety and, and yeah, all of these things. It's important, it's really, it's really useful to have this authenticity and also to have 
real clarity about what you stand for and to have that real human relationship with your customers. I hope I've explained that okay. Um, so as a team, or if your business is just you, you can, you can think about how you'll communicate this. So think about this before you start doing it. So for example, one way, if you don't feel confident enough to talk about some of the wider issues with yourself, i.e., for example, in your social media posts, then a way you can do this if you communicate as a team that if you're talking about wider issues, for example, with the food system, you can agree to share posts from other organizations who are talking about these issues. So it's a way, it's also nice because it's a show don't tell. You're showing what you believe in and what you care about through sharing content created by people who might be able to explain the things that you care about a lot a lot better because that's what they do um, and it's also like a softer alignment as well so it's not ostracizing to people who might hold diff a different worldview um, but it's also it, it's enough for people to understand what you are about and what what you stand for so you can agree on this as a team if you all if you all do different exercises to communicate about your business. If you if you don't want to be really shouty about the issues you care about, then agree that agree agree on that as a team that you'll just share other people's words as opposed to expressing your own. Um, or you can agree as a team that you know to really go for it and to be really open about your journey with the issues that you care about. So. Another really important part of messaging is storytelling as opposed to, I guess the, the word I used earlier was like sloganing. So it's, yeah, so studies have shown that people are 22 times more likely to remember a fact if it's embedded within a story. And storytelling has become a bit of a catchphrase within marketing at the moment. It's, it's particularly in the last, well, since forever, but it, it's definitely a, a thing over the last five years where brands are increasingly using storytelling to communicate with their customers. And the reason why is because it's a really effective way for customers to resonate with what you're saying. Um, using a story to deliver, and also it's, it's, I guess you could also call it a soft sell to use phraseology like this, but it's a, if you are giving your messages within us through a story it's again it's not it's not as explicit as buy this it's great it's it's kind of implicit rather than explicit and it lands with the customer in a in a, in a kind of much more human way and most people can understand stories and most people can connect with stories much better than they can with for example telling your customer what to do and what they should care about So here's some ideas around how you can show rather than tell. And this, so one thing you can, one thing that's really effective, particularly with food enterprises, is showing behind the scenes footage and images of what you're doing. So you can show what you love and share your enthusiasm for it. So for example, if you show, so for example, if you think about this, of how you're posting on social media, if you show beautiful close-up images of, if you're a grower and you're showing beautiful close-up images of the vegetables that you're growing, or if you're a veg box and you're showing beautiful close-up images of the veggies in your veg, vegetables in your veg box, then it's like you're showing through these pictures your enthusiasm and your love for the produce. And or you can also show through these images that they're super fresh and delicious, this kind of thing. So it's using images to show rather than tell. Um, also, if you, if you if, like, if for example, one of your values is caring, is being earth positive, then, or caring for the soil or supporting growers who care for the soil, then you could maybe tell a story about how, you know, if you're working with a grower who's gone from the journey gone through the journey of being conventional through to organic or if not organic agroecological or looking after the soil then you can show that story or you can show them telling that story and then it shows that's that kind of implicit implicitly showing your alignment with healthy soil 
rather than saying just in a line, we care about the soil. It's that show, don't tell. And you can also share grower stories. And if you're sharing grower stories, for example, that, you know, or that could be behind the value of community or, you know, supporting local. If one of your values is just local, then that's a way that you can implicitly show that. And also, I talked about veg spotlights with love, but um, that that could be around. So, for example, if you care about fresh, high quality veg, then you know, click, do do some. Yeah, maybe you could do a short video of one of your growers, or if you're growing yourself, literally holding the vegetable in the field and talking about their vegetable and talking about how it tastes, and just really kind of bringing that to life for your for your customers. And this works really well on social media. And also it's quite a nice way to, yeah, to get started with taking video content is just to introduce a vegetable, for example, and just talk about it with enthusiasm. And also a really effective one here because it it's showing and not telling. It's, it's if, if you give your customers stories, for example, how they might've benefited through subscribing to your veg box or, or even their, testimonials about how delicious your produce is or you know even their stories and how they started shopping with you these these this this has a double awesome effect in that it's customers can see themselves in that customer so it's this kind of again it's putting a human face to the experience and, and also anything the customer says that's positive about you in that story is a show don't tell because you're not telling it yourself your customer is and then also a double whammy for this is that's almost like a digital word of mouth bonus point because you're you're giving this experience so it's it's like social proof online which most people put personal recommendations from family or friends or even from strangers above all other forms of marketing or advertising so it's a really effective yeah it's a really effective way to bring that word of mouth experience online um, and also you can share what motivates you and your team. So you could do a little, you could do like small videos or you could even do a picture and a caption of what motivates you or your team members. And even though you're talking directly, it's not your brand or your enterprise name talking. So it's, it's this show don't tell and it's also putting a human face behind the brand, which helps customers to really identify with you and what you're doing. It has that, it gives that human connection. And as I mentioned in the previous slide, share what you stand for and what you care about. And that can be through, and what I mean by action here is that can be through, for example, sharing um, other more activist organizations posts. This, this has a double, also, also another awesome double positive effect in that you're supporting organizations to, yeah, to do better on social media and, and, to see, and for more people to see these, the, yeah, to have exposure to the issues that you care about. And so, you're, yeah, so it's a, it's a nice kind of double give. It gives to you and it gives back to the organizations that you want to support as a business. So also this, this just came up from a conversation yesterday um, around why it's important to center your customers in your stories. So within storytelling, this is one of the, another one of the reasons why giving customer testimonials is so effective is because it centers your customers in your stories. And the reason you want to center your customers in your stories is because customers, in, in a really good way, they, they care about themselves and, and what you can do for them. So a simple way of doing this in your writing is use you talk more about to your customers, so you and your, instead of talking about yourself, we. So, um, for example, instead of we provide fresh vegetables, it's, you know, enjoy fresh vegetables for your, we supply fresh vegetables for your family. So it's that kind of making it a bit more personal. And what I mean by be Yoda, don't be Skywalker, is instead of, it's that not being the center of what you're talking about. So it's be Yoda, you are, giving your customers access to gorgeous fresh food and local food. So it's that, yeah, it's you're the one that's facilitating their access to delicious food. And this is what also the kind of grower stories do as well. It's that you're helping, yeah, you're helping to kind of guide that fresh produce to, to your customers. And 
yeah and also don't be skywalker is that don't be at the center of, try not to center yourself in your marketing message because it's this kind of delicate balancing act of sharing with customers what you want them to know about you but also understanding what your cost what your customers want and trying to inject value in what you're sharing so storytelling works so well because it naturally gives value in that stories often provoke an emotional response and that comes back to the three e's of content marketing which is to think is your content educational is it entertaining or is it emotional and so in this case storytelling is almost always emotional it can also be entertaining so yeah so it's making sure that it gives it yeah making sure that it gives value to your customer and this is why for example recipes or how to prepare and a, a vegetable that people might not have experienced preparing before is giving value and helping you be Yoda like here's how to produce here's how to prepare that strange vegetable that you've never seen before which you got in your veg box this week um and that might be particularly useful with and it also might be particularly useful with your newer customers for example if they're used to pristine carrots which they've bought from the supermarket that kind of if you've got any tips of how to like yeah clean i don't know clean carrots or maybe not that but if even just explaining why you know why it's a positive thing that they still have mud on them i.e they stay fresher for longer you are being Yoda because you're explaining, you're the guide and you're helping them to understand why those carrots are covered in mud in their veg box. And it's a win-win for you be because it's also educational and it also helps, it's also a winner because it also helps you to circumvent objections before they even occur. So it's thinking of things always from your customer point of view, what might they be struggling with? And and this leads me on to another really core cool part of your messaging is help your customers to feel understood. And your customers really want to know that you understand them, you understand what they care about and you, and they, you understand what they're going through or what their issues might be. And I know that seems like a lot to take on as an enterprise, as a brand, because um, you know we're not psychic, um, but it's good to just always be trying to think about where your customer is coming from and seeing things from your customer's point of view. And it's also a point here as well that buy, like people's buying behaviors are, so for example, if you feel frustrated, if new customers are starting to go back to previous buying behaviors, like buying for the supermarket, it's really good to understand, to think about why that might be and that these behaviors are rooted in identity. So if someone, yeah, so if someone feels like they're the kind of person that, and also if they've always bought from a supermarket, it's really hard to kind of break that pattern and it's easy for them to go back to buying in supermarkets as soon as, you know, for example, lockdown, now that lockdown's lifting. So with that in mind, it's, this is another reason why it's so important to think about ways you can help your, particularly your new customers feel like they belong and that you value them and that you understand them. And yeah, and this is going back to the previous slide, for example, if you're thinking in advance of the kind of things that your customers might be struggling with, i.e. muddy vegetables, circumventing that through, for example, your social media messaging, offering advice on how to prepare vegetables, then that's a show don't tell, you're showing your customers that you understand that that's something they might have struggled with. Because it's really important to help your customers feel good. And yeah, it's, it's really important that your customers feel good when they buy from you. And this is why it's more effective to lead with positive stories and, and positive points than it is negative. And what I mean by this is for like, just for example, something I was talking about yesterday. Um, and it's that if we focus on messaging that saying, for example, we should value, we should all value food more 
and buy local and organic, just for example. This, this is a really positive message for people that have bought, you know, already buy with you and are committed to buying local sustainable food because they feel really good about their previous buying behaviors. For someone who has just started buying this way or has just experienced this for the first time through lockdown, they're gonna feel a bit ostracized by this because their buying behaviors might not have been this way before. And rather than that being a positive, inspiring thing of, okay, from now on, I'm going to buy it this way, that kind of subtle feeling of like shame or guilt might make them more likely to turn away to supermarkets who are always totally positive about, you know, their buying from a supermarket. So it's just before you, with your messaging as you're kind of crafting it, and this is this is like a crafting good messaging for your enterprise is like a it's a personal process and it and it and it's gonna be an iterative journey as well. Like it's you know, you'll constantly get better at it the more that you think about these things and the more that you're doing it and you'll start to see what your customers customers resonate with and what they don't. So you'll notice this through how, you know, how many likes your posts get, for example, or even just verbally when you're talking to customers, you'll, you'll be able to feel what they, you know, what things about what you're doing and what you're saying resonate with them. And it's just, you know, as you go, like taking all of this in and learning it and starting to craft your message to be something that makes your customers feel really good about shopping with you. Like they're part of your, like they're part of the team. So, and part of this is, it's important to keep everything as clear and simple as you can. So another thing that can help to turn customers off is to, if your customers feel stupid at any point in the buying process. And this can be really simple things. It's as a as a customer going, to, driving and parking in a supermarket, going and buying all the same things you always buy in the same parts of the supermarket you buy them from. It's just simple. It's something that people might've done for decades. So if there's at any point in the buying journey with you, your customer feels like, oh, I don't know where I'm supposed to click. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Where am I supposed to go? What do I do when I get there? It's like anything that feels a bit tricky is enough to kind of stop a customer from taking that journey with you. Um, so this is again more around messaging for new customers and it's just to make sure that at every step of shopping with you or buying from you that you make it as clear to understand what people need to do as you can. And I'm just thinking about my uh, a friend of mine who yesterday was talking about how to you know, just using the um, refills in the local pharmacy who are now doing refills. Like she's, she really wants to do it. And this, but it seems like a really simple, small thing, but she really wants to do it, but she doesn't know what she's supposed to do. She doesn't know whether she's allowed to bring her own thing or whether she has to get a container from them. And she doesn't like to ask. I think this is a very British thing. <laughs> and so that means she just doesn't do it. And, I, and it's just, anything that you can to remove the, the barriers or the blocks from customers from, to buy from you and to, con to continue to buy from you is worth doing. And all of, and, and the content that you're putting out in your marketing, i.e. your posts, your emails, these are all places where you can do that. And it's almost think trying to think ahead of your customers of what they might struggle with. And for example, even with collection points, like really lay it out how exactly what to do, how to do it, where you need to go, what it looks like, pictures, for example, of what, you know, because it's, you know, again, it's don't underestimate that customer journey of when they arrive, will, will they need to talk to people? And if they need to talk, you know, it's just, yeah, it's remembering the, the human that, yeah, that's buying from you. And in often cases, it's not like this, but again, it's, this is part of that making your what you're offering feel like it's for everybody. Um, maybe most of your customers is, you know, are, are totally comfortable with shopping from you. They might have been shopping with you for a long with you for a, for a long time. But don't underestimate how tricky the new can feel um, for, for customers that might not shop this way. So that's the end of my slide. So I want to say thank you. Um, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Come back to you. And I'm wondering if there's any questions or if anyone would like any support 
with the messaging that we're currently doing. If, if any of this isn't clear, um, yeah, does anyone have any questions? I found that really useful, thank you. Has anyone found it tricky with that, like, knowing what to say when it comes to writing captions on social media, for example? Hi, Kay. It's Rachel from Tamar Valley Food Herbs. Can you hear me okay? <laughs> it's not, for some reason, I'm not. Hearing oh. Hello. Is... Hello. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Hey, Rachel, how's it going? Um, good, thank you. It's just a comment, really, about because um, I find it quite difficult on social media to fill in the time for when our shop is not directly open. So I'm feeling that um, our stories and kind of the values kind of messaging for the times when our shop is closed. When it's open, we can direct people directly to our shop and say our oh, order deadline is here and this is how you shop um, but just filling in those gaps I find quite difficult on the days that our shop is not open online um, so I'm kind of thinking like the values based storytelling is, is the time to use those days at their best I'm just wondering if you had any thoughts on yeah, so I, I feel like you, my reception, my, my internet might have been a bit iffy then. I kind of got a little bit of what you were saying, but not all of it. So is that, can, can you say that one more time for me, Rachel? Sorry. It, it's just um, the timing of our messaging on social media. I can find quite difficult sometimes. When our mm. online shop is open, our food mm. is open and people people know they can take directly to the shop um, or we can tell them about our order deadlines when you need to order by. Um, but the days when our online shop is closed and they can't directly go and shop, I find quite difficult. And I'm wondering if those days when we're shut are the good days to be promoting our values and messaging and for a comeback later and do your shop kind of posts. Excellent. That's a really good question. And um, yeah, I'm really glad that you brought that one up because this kind of goes back to that giving value for your customer and for your audience. And I think on social media, it's, it's nice to have this idea of kind of give, give, take. And usually when you ask a customer to do something, like for example, even if it's something that's valuable to them, like old order cycles open, click here to shop now kind of thing that's actually a, a take when it comes to messaging or social media posting, you're asking the customer to do something. So if all of your posts are kind of always directing the customer to do something, like go here, go there, do it, it's, it's good in between to definitely include other content. And by the content, some of the more, like a give post would be a story post because you're giving the customer value in that, you're sharing a story that they can engage with and perhaps have an emotional response to. And it's these kinds of stories and these kinds of posts that help the customers to have a bit more of a, a relationship with your with with you and your brand. Because yeah, if you're constantly asking them to go somewhere, it, it just feels like almost like a one-sided relationship. So it's yeah, it's absolutely the time in between these times when you actually want the customer to do something to yeah to, to share stories. The other really good thing about this is in terms of, I've, I've covered this in another webinar, but in terms of the Facebook algorithm, it's good that all of your posts on Facebook in particular are not ask posts, i.e. directing a customer to go somewhere. And that's because again, Facebook, the Facebook algorithm logs your page as like almost like just broadcasting. It's not part of the community. It's not promoting conversation or collaboration or it. So it's, yeah, it it's, and it's constantly directing people to go off of Facebook, which the Facebook algorithm doesn't like either. So it's, yeah, it's really important if you want more people to see when you do post the important post, 
coming shop now that you also have filler posts that help that, that help your content to be seen more because when the algorithm if the algorithm thinks that you're constantly giving these ask posts then when you it, it's it stops serving it to as many people so not as many people see those posts so by having these like non ask posts in between when you finally do post an ask post more people will see it so this is one of the things as well i think because everyone's so busy and i think sometimes the posts that don't directly appear to give value to you as a business i.e directing people directly to come and shop with you can almost feel like a bit frivolous or, or they're not functioning towards something but actually as part of the whole they're functioning in that more people will see your ask post when you post it and also again it's generating this kind of give give take relationship that feels a lot more yeah a, a lot more nurturing to the customer and will help with um, customer loyalty in the long run because again it's generating this sense of connection between the customer and, and you as a business does that answer your question yeah that's great thank you that's pretty good for awesome does anyone else have any anything they want to share, even if it's your own experience or things that you found difficult before or things you struggle with around this topic? Um, actually, one thing that is a lot of our growers uh, in our local community aren't very computer savvy, uh, can't use a phone even because uh, we're in a very rural highlands of Scotland. And mm -hmm. able to get stuff like grower stories is really challenging. Is there anything you can recommend in that sort of situation to get around a lack of being able to source things from people who are directly there, especially in lockdown because I can't go see anyone? <laughs> Yeah, that's a really good question. That's a really good point. Because, um, yeah, and also it's not always easy to actually go and take the phone. So I guess if you if you speak to them on the phone, you could also, you're, yeah, hmm, it could just be getting short quotes from your growers as well. So the next time you're talking, if you could maybe think of a, a theme of something that you care about, for example. So if you do the core values exercise yourself, then you could think of each of these themes. And if you feel, if you've got a good relationship with, maybe pick the growers that will be on board with this kind of exercise, but maybe pick one of your values and even just ask, ask your grower what they think about this. And just within what they're saying, just try and write down, even if it's just one sentence, and ask them if they mind if you would quote them on your on your social media about this. And then just use the quote. And what you could do is instead of a picture of them, if they're not comfortable enough to share their picture, um, then you could, I mean, if they've you could share, if they've got any pictures of their land or anything like this, you could share that, or even of the vet like the vegetables that they produce, if you could, you know, perhaps when that's kind of amalgamated with your but if for example, do you have a is it a veg box scheme or a shop or what's your what's your enterprise yeah we're like a we shop and we do doing deliveries drop and deliveries off for people during lockdown i don't know if we can sustainably do that forever but it would be nice um yeah okay awesome so i mean then that maybe that could be um this is this is something that's really important as well to think. I, I, I hope I haven't made it seem really complicated through this. This is kind of, I mean, really when it comes to social media content, it's just keeping in mind done is better than perfect. It's that what you're through social media, it's just you're communicating with your customers and you're communicating with people. And what people want more and more these days is more authenticity because they're used to having super shiny brands and you know, actually what people what, what people want now is something that feels more real. And this is this is not just in our kind of like little bubble or niche. It's like this is a, a growing consumer trend across the board in all sorts of different 
um, yeah, in, in different markets in different areas. So it's thinking done is better than perfect. And this could just simply be a quote with even a, just a, a picture from your phone of the vegetable that or what they've grown and produced and put in the veg box or in your shop. So yeah, so it's it's just thinking there's lots of different ways to do that, but I think it's yeah, totally tricky if if they don't have access to yeah, to if they can't take photos themselves. But if you don't mind doing a bit, yeah, do, doing that, then taking a photo of what they grow, a close up, try and make the photo as bright as you can. Um, so like hold it up, maybe even take it outside in, in sunlight so that it's bright and vibrant and just take a photo of holding a vegetable and you'd be surprised at how effective even simple photos like this are on social media. And then yeah, quote, quote them if they're happy with that. And then that's also nice because it's again, it's the show don't tell and you're, you're injecting your message in this through the voice of your grower, which is, which is really, you know, it's nice and it's also, it helps you're also in this process telling your grower as well what you believe in as a business, which helps therefore to kind of create that same sense of human connection between you and your growers as well. So it's it's tricky, but it's really worth doing. And it's also, it's nice because it's giving, it's not just nice, I've been using that word a lot today and I hate, I'm not, <laughs> it's, it's really, it, it's great because it's giving a voice to your grower as well and connecting your grower's voice with your customer's voice, which is, you know, it's it's really effective marketing as well as being a generally good thing to do. So, yeah, is that, is that, does, is that helpful at all? Yeah, definitely. I'm totally, like, I never really thought about just asking them a question straight up and seeing if anyone replies. <laughs> Cause, no, yeah, I mean... You can also say like I'm, I'm doing it with you know I'm trying something new for our social media um to help us yeah yeah to to make our social media better I'm trying something I didn't just I'm trying something new for our social media um do you mind if I just ask you a question this is our this is one of our core values wondering what you think what this word means to you and you know I think you might even be just from thinking of yeah just my experience with like journalism is that it's yeah, you'd be surprised at what, yeah, how, like, that people, people like to talk about how they, a lot of people, most people like to talk about how they feel about things, and particularly if your core values mean something to you, then when you're talking to your grower about them, it's likely that they will resonate with that meaning as well. Um, and, yeah, you might be surprised at how, how nice that conversation is, so. David, thanks very much. Awesome, thanks. Um, any more questions? Awesome. Well, I think we've actually finished three minutes before, which is good because normally I tried to make my slides a bit shorter this time because I'm finishing about 10 minutes after. So I'm quite sure with this. So, yeah, if um, I just want to check, does everyone know about our marketing Facebook group? Is, has everybody has everybody joined already? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Cool. So yeah, because I'll be putting the slide and this webinar on Facebook group, and yeah, so awesome. Thank you everyone for coming. And if again, if um, I contact me through the Facebook group if anyone wants to go a bit further or wants a bit of feedback or a bit of back and forth among the step like along the steps of this process I'm more than happy to to get involved and help um sometimes it's good when you're kind of doing this to kind of bet ideas back and forth so um, yeah just offering help for that if that does an interest to anyone so I'm on the Facebook group so just drop me drop me a message if that if that would be good for you Cool. So thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming. I really hope that thank was you so fun. much. It's really useful. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Have a nice night. Bye. 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 Bye.